Hello again, I'm Ruth and today I'm going to be talking about two versions of The Secret Garden. I couldn't get my hands on the 1949 black and white version. I have seen clips and the child acting looks abominable, but the filmography looks really interesting, so I'd like to watch it someday for that reason. I have seen the ABC Weekend Special, which is animated, and I really enjoyed that because Mary has a cat who can talk and helps her out, and Miss Medlock sings about how she wants to take over Mistlethwaite Manor, which is quite funny, so it's a musical, and also is a bit based on the book, because in the book the Doctor does know that if Colin were to die, he would inherit Mistlethwaite Manor, so she's in cahoots with him. And I also think they tend to, in adaptations, make Miss Medlock a bit more evil than she is in the book in order to create conflict. And then there's the 1987 live action version, which I stopped watching because Mary is American in it and I just couldn't stand it. I think it's more inspired by the book anyway. But I do like the bit at the start where Mary's mother is having an affair with one of her father's soldiers because that is heavily implied in the book. Derek Jacobi plays Archibald Craven both in this version and as the voice in the animated version, which I thought was quite interesting. I've also seen Back to the Secret Garden, which is a sequel to the 1987 version, and it was pretty good. It has Mary and Colin married, and Mistlethwaite Manor has become an orphanage. So I quite enjoyed that, but today I'm going to be talking about the 1993 version and the 2020 version. So here we go. The 1993 Secret Garden has to be one of my favourite films of all time. Warner Brothers was really putting out these sort of magical children's films based on books and they really set you back in the Edwardian era for instance, they feel historically accurate and they're just beautifully crafted. So after The Secret Garden they put out Black Beauty which Andrew Knott who plays Dickon in The Secret Garden was also in and then a Little Princess, which is another book by Frances Hodgson Burnett, although I don't like that they set it in America and I think the child acting wasn't quite as good in it. And then they did The Treasure Seekers, which is about a big family who are on hard times and trying to find ways of making money. And then I would also count Fairy Tale the True Story as being part of this series, Although it's based on a historical event of these two little girls during World War I convincing everyone that they'd taken pictures of fairies, but it actually turned out to be a hoax. It was kind of the earliest form of Photoshop. In The Secret Garden, the haunting song The Winter Light is really beautiful and it just makes you feel the healing nature of the garden. It's kind of like in a documentary series on nature, they show you the plants growing over a long period of time as if it's happening in a short period of time. And it just really gives you a sense of how nature can always come back from difficult times and every spring the flowers grow again. Then there's the 2020 Secret Garden, which I bailed on in the first 20 minutes when I tried to watch it for the first time. I think if you hang on to the middle, it does start to pick up, but there is a massive problem with pacing. The scenes have such abrupt changes, you don't really get to sit with any action. It's like each scene is very still and there's barely anything happening and at the same time you're not being given enough information because you're just jumping to the next scene. It feels like very lazy screenwriting to be honest because it's trying to start loads of stories up and they're not giving you payoff. You really begin to appreciate films that have short scenes of, for instance, a character waking up getting dressed, brushing their teeth, and you get a sense of their whole life, even though for each scene that was actually a lot of effort for the filmmakers. However, in this version, they just jump to the next thing and don't really explain anything properly. Nothing is either introduced or given an end very well. They seem to have blown their whole budget on the CGI robin and the CGI plants, which aren't even very effective because the robin is mainly replaced by this dog who isn't in the book and I get that it's easier to train a dog but if you can literally CGI the robin then you might as well have it 
have the big iconic part that it has in the book. If you look at book covers, the robin is always an important part because the robin is kind of one of the most magical characters in the book. And then again, I don't mind that they have it set at the partition of India, even though this is after Francis Hodge and Burnett, the author, had died. This isn't always a bad thing. In Five Children and It, they moved it to World War II in order to give the story a heart so that they would be missing their father, who's away in the army. But in this version, they've completely missed the heart of the story. So changing the dates doesn't really help. The heart of the story is this very simple but incredibly powerful metaphor of the garden and how the garden is dead and Mary herself has never received real love because her parents are so selfish that they didn't really care about her or show her affection or have time for her. So as she learns to go outside and play and Dickon teaches her how to grow seeds and nurture things, so too the garden is growing and things start to flourish. Mary is able to pass on her learning how to connect with Colin and eventually Colin and Archibald's relationship gets saved. So it's a very easy metaphor of how the garden is flourishing and so too eventually does the family. So Mary needed Misselfreight and Misselfreight needed Mary. It's a really beautiful story. And the fact that this film has totally missed that in order to, I guess, try and make Mary more relatable is a real shame. I like the 2020 Mary's costumes. The sailor suit style purple coat is really nice and contrasts the luscious green that they're going for in the film. But the way they play Mary is really odd. She's kind of like a roll doll child. She sort of talks back to the grown ups and is cheeky. And she's got a very teenage vibe going on. It's like she's trying to assert herself as a grown up herself, whether I think even in the 1940s where they've set it, she would have had a sense of the grown up's authority over her. Yes, she's used to commanding the Indian servants in India and making their lives hell. But that doesn't mean that she would be used to telling English grown ups what to do. And I think they've also made her sort of more tomboyish, climbing trees and relatable and therefore she doesn't really seem like an unusual child she is actively seeking connection she tries to make friends with a boy who steals her food and she also is matey towards Martha so she's got a lot of confidence which the Mary in the book hasn't got her confidence is all in telling people what to do yes but in relating to other people emotionally she has no confidence at all. She's completely scared of rejection because she's dissociated. Her parents have rejected her so often that she has put a barrier up and she rebuffs people's bids for connection. So when Martha in the 1993 version starts making jokes with her and putting her hat over her eyes or trying to tickle her, she just doesn't get it. It confuses her. And she's very good at playing sort of this sour girl who's actually very nervous of other people, constantly fearing rejection. And it takes people like Martha and Dickin being kind to her and showing her what real love can look like that makes her come out of her shell. And she starts to fear rejection less and she's able to pass this on to Colin, who also learns how to connect to people. I think that in both films, the child acting for Colin is the strongest out of the three children. Although I think it's a shame in the 2020 version, he doesn't really get to do the tantrums. He gets to be posh and petulant and commanding. But every time he starts up a howl, Mary just clamps her hand over his mouth. So when she says, don't start this up again, you'll scream, I'll scream, you know how this goes. We don't really know how this goes because we've never been able to see either of them have a proper tantrum, which is really characteristic of them in the book. You do get to see this really important part of the book in the 1993 version, however, because they have Hayden Proust, who I'm glad was cast instead of Elijah Wood, really going for it, sort of screaming and hitting his pillows and going red in the face. So Mary comes in and she has a massive go at him. She says that everyone hates him and she just has a tantrum herself. 
and it really makes him sort of look up because she is reacting unlike anyone else has ever reacted before. All the grown-ups sort of fawn over him and do his bidding in order to stop the screaming. But she is also interesting him because she's challenging what the grown-ups say, which is that he's going to die early and not live to be a man. And that's exactly what is making him cry in the first place, is feeling that he doesn't have a future. So the fact that she believes in him and that she does believe that he has a future really makes him care a lot about her opinion. And they're really the central relationship of the story. It's very important that they sort of can back each other up because they know what it's like to be a spoilt brat who's neglected by their parents. Whether in the 2020 version, even when they're introduced, she sort of finds him down her straight corridor. He's very easy to find. I don't know how she missed him before, to be honest. They don't seem that surprised to find each other or excited that they have a cousin. And then it abruptly ends because all the scenes in the 2020 version abruptly end. Where in the 1993 version, you get this sort of mystery. It's quite gothic. She sort of says to Martha that she can hear this howling. And Martha says that a maid just has two fake. And she actually says when she finds him because she's interested and Martha's really shocked and worried that she has actually found him. So it's kind of a bit of a detective thing to try and work out who Colin is. So when she finds him down a winding staircase and past medieval tapestries, it's really exciting. They're both worried that each other is a ghost and then they're really excited when they find out that they're cousins and the same age and it's really sweet because when Mary is coming down the stairs Colin sort of looks in the mirror and checks his breath because he's meeting a girl for the first time and later on he says that he wants to marry her and I think it's because she has become so important to him and she sort of reminds him that they're cousins but they're not only cousins in this film their mothers are twins there's the sort of twin elephants to represent this. So genetically, they are half brother and sister. So they probably shouldn't marry. But he does seem to be very interested in her because as he's taking a photo of her and Dickin, he gets them to look at each other on the swing seat. And he gets quite jealous and angry when they sort of stare at each other as if they quite like each other. So there's a sort of love triangle being set up for when they're grown up. And he does actually have quite a difficult life. Um, he has to go through all these odd Edwardian treatments for children who are apparently sickly because Medlock is so convinced that he is a sickly child and convincing him that he is a sickly child. So he goes through these sort of ice baths and having electric shocks. And you can see that even though he's spoiled and has all these nice books and toys, he doesn't really have a very nice life being bedridden and being told that if he goes outside, the spores will get him. And I think that Mary really admires him when he is actually starting to walk and starting to believe in himself as well, even though she sounds harsh when he's being babyish. She actually really encourages him. So when he sort of walks between her and Dickin for the first time, it's kind of visually compared to a lamb walking for the first time. He's really growing and flourishing. And I don't think you get this at all in the 2020 version. He seems to like Dickin a lot more than he likes Mary. And Mary is also very sarcastic towards him and almost contemptuous of him. So when she says to Medlock that she cares about him and that he's her friend, you're not really sure you believe her because she keeps forcing him to do stuff that he doesn't want to do. It's very different to her being his almost cheerleader and encouraging him in the 1993 version. In the 2020 version, she literally just keeps forcing him to do stuff like go to the place that his mother died or go to his mother's room. And it seems quite callous and unfair. It's very different to her actually encouraging him. In the book, Martha and Dickon are part of the Sowerby family, which is a really large family where there's not always enough food to go around, but they're very virtuous about it because they know they have love and therefore they are secure in their happiness and they don't feel intimidated by people being mean to them. They can be cheerful in the face of sulky children or people looking down on them because they're lower class. So... In the 2020 version, Martha and Dickin treating Mary as she deserves to be treated, rather than 
as their family has kind of taught them to be. Mrs Sowerby is a bigger part in the book. She's this sort of jolly person who actually gives Mary the skipping rope from Martha. But um, in the 2020 version, you just see that Mary has a skipping rope. And I think that shows that they don't understand the importance of the Sowerby family because Martha is friendly initially to Mary, but then she loses her humour very quickly because Mary stamps her foot at her once. Where in the 1993 version, Martha never loses her humour with Mary and Mary has a full on tantrum when they first meet. So I don't think they really develop Martha and Mary's relationship as well in the 2020 version. Mary does eventually stand up for Martha against Miss Medlock because Miss Medlock is telling Martha off. But the Miss Medlock and Martha relationship is so watered down compared to the interesting way they explored it in 1993. In the book, Mrs Medlock has given Martha the role because she is friends with her mother, Mrs Sowerby. Martha is not trained to be a servant and she's a bit too chatty, so the other servants don't really like her being there. So she goes and hangs out with Mary. And in the 1993 version, it's a really interesting exploration of that gratitude because Miss Medlock gets very stressed and actually slaps Martha when she finds Mary in Colin's room, even though it wasn't Martha's fault that Mary was there. It was Mary who found Colin, but Martha is still able to comfort Miss Medlock and feel sorry for her because Lord Craven later on tells her off because Mary and Colin have disappeared. So I think it's really interesting the way that you can see that Martha is showing that imperviousness to maltreatment. Just because Miss Medlock has been unkind to her doesn't mean that she's going to be unkind back. And Dickon in the 2020 version also kind of is offhand to Mary. He isn't sort of really friendly and cheerful in the way that he is in the 1993 version where he gets her to chase him and then rides off in his pony. And he's always in the 1993 version got a crow on his shoulder or a squirrel. Where in the 2020 version, there's not really many animals. The only non-CGI one seems to be the dog. Um, or some insects they have on their hands. I like it when they have loads of ladybirds on their hands. But he does do a bit of veterinary work with the dog to help its paw. But other than that, he doesn't really seem as one with nature as his sort of lost boy costume is trying to say. I do like that Mary passes on his spit handshake to Colin because in the book, Mary sits by Colin's bedside a lot before Colin starts going outside and sort of tells him about Dickon and passes on the stuff that Dickon has been teaching her, like the Yorkshire dialect, which in the 2020 version, Colin just sort of repeats from Dickon directly. He likes Dickon's Yorkshire accent a lot, the way he says flowers, and in the book, flower symbolism is quite important. So I don't think he quite gets to be the sort of woodland nymph that he is in the book. In the 2020 version, they can't seem to deal with that Mary's parents didn't love her in the book. They were narcissistic parents, so they've made them into these loving parents. Her father played with her when she was little, and her mother is only not playing with her because she is in grief for her sister, Colin's mother. So you end up having a story where both Mary and Colin are under a misunderstanding that their mothers didn't love them, and then they find out through letters that their mothers did in fact love them. And the mothers even seem to come back to life a lot because they're kind of ghosts, which fit in with the horror film Doll's House that they've made Misselfrate Manor into. And Mary even interacts with her mother, and it's a kind of healing process, but it's a very different story from the 1993 version, which really shows off the narcissistic parents just from one memory of Mary when she's a very little girl going towards her mother's arms and then her mother gets distracted and runs off. That really shows you completely how narcissistic and self-absorbed Mary's mother was. She could have been a good mother, but instead she was always distracted by other things like parties or her father or maybe even other soldiers. So I think the way they've done it is a complete misunderstanding of the book and maybe an inability to deal with the idea of narcissistic parents, even though they exist in real life. And in the 2020 version, for some reason, they have laid Lord Craven into a kind of villain. Colin Firth plays Lord Craven, 
and he actually was in the 1987 version as adult Colin, so this is his second Secret Garden adaptation. But even though they seem to try and make the mothers better, they are making him much worse as a father and as an uncle, because he keeps threatening to send Mary to school. And he even says something that sounds slightly sexist, where he says that all women eventually leave Mistlethwaite Manor, which is a really ominous thing to say, given that his wife left Mistlethwaite Manor because she died. So it's almost saying that Mary's going to die. However, in the 1993 version, He's much more like in the book. He sort of just can't deal with life. He's too caught up in grief. He tries to be kind to Mary and he says yes when she asks for a bit of earth, which is a really important part of the book, where she's basically asking to have the secret garden. But she is doing it in a sort of coy way in order not to be told no. So he says, of course, you can have part of earth, sort of, you know, go away. I can't, you know, deal with you because you look like my dead wife. But he is actually being kind to her and in the book he actually sends her gifts because he can give love he just is unable to give quality time to his niece and son which is what they desperately need in order to feel healed so he's a much more gothic character and showing that colin and he are the ghosts in this narrative so as you can probably tell I didn't really like the 2020 version, I absolutely adore the 1993 version, but I am open to there being new versions, and maybe even one that surpasses the 1993 version. I think that doing more adaptations of Frances Hodgson Burnett's work would be great.